So there are a lot of ways to actually go about implementing digital logic circuits. You could just use individual chips, like the 74 series chips. Um, or there's a, kind of an older, not as used way anymore, and that is programmable logic arrays, or PLAs. So programmable logic arrays are, as you guess, in a way programmable, and they're logic devices, and they're made in kind of a logical array. So they're made to work with uh, our product of sums, or when we have something that's some AND gates, and then a big OR gate tying them together. So, what a PLA looks like is, well, this diagram right here. And what we can see is, let me get rid of some of this stuff here. What we can see here is this is a, uh, a four input PLA, and we've got some inverters here. So basically, uh, we have the ability to have the signal X, and then here, we know since this is inverter, this is going to be x naught or x prime. And so we've got the ability to have four different signals going into these AND gates. And you see each signal and its inverse is going into this AND gate. And so we know that it could never actually work. An, an AND gate will never be a 1 if we have a signal and it's inverse going to it because if this is a 1 that means this signal is going to be 0 and so our, we know from our truth table from an AND gate that this will never output a 1. So how can this make sense? Well as I said this is a programmable device where we actually go about breaking some of these connections any of the co connections we don't need and we leave behind the connections that we want. So uh, PLAs they're, they're not used a lot anymore. Uh, they're predominantly uh, overshadowed by like FPGAs, uh, field programmable gate arrays. Um, and, that, and they're nice because they're a lot easier to reconfigure. Uh, but a good use is maybe uh, some of you computing enthusiasts know the uh, Commodore 64. Uh, it had actually a couple PLAs in it. Um, uh, like this one specifically was made for handling like input output circuits. So let's uh let's look at let's look at a PLA kind of a little bit exploded. Um so it's the same diagram as the last slide, uh but I've got these wires kind of broken out here. And um so these dots for our case they're actually going to represent fuses or a connection this wire is connected to this wire. And so by default, a PLA is going to come with everything connected. And it's your job, or the programming device's job, to break the connections that you don't want. So actually, in between each of these lines is a... So we, we have a, a line going this way. And in between these two lines is a fuse. This is the symbol for a fuse if you've never seen it. This right here is a fuse. So uh, perhaps you've seen automotive fuses or um, it's, it's a little different than a breaker that you might have in your house but a a fuse is just essentially a calibrated piece of wire that when too much current or too much charge is flowing through here, it will pop or it'll break. So um, normally these are protection devices. It's to prevent too much current from going to something. But in our case, uh, these are actually made to be, we want to break these connections. Um, so say, say this uh, AND gate, we wanted to just have, let's say this is X and Y. And say that we wanted this AND gate to be, uh, let's say, X, Y, 
not. So what that means is we want to keep this signal right here. We want to keep x and we want to keep y not. And that means we have to get rid of everything else. That means we have to get rid of this one, have to get rid of this one, get rid of this one, get rid of this one. Get rid of, oh, we don't want to get rid of that one. We want to get rid of this one and this one. So we only keep this one and this one. Now, um, what happens here is when we want to get rid of these connections, the programmer will actually have to apply a positive voltage here and negative or ground here and you apply a large current uh, and a large current in these terms maybe maybe like 200 milliamps so you feed this current through here and this fuse is going to see too much charge and it's going to break so for example if we wanted to break this fuse we'd apply a positive voltage here and our ground here and only to these two and then that will complete the circuit and break this fuse and this signal will no longer be connected to this part of this gate so we do that for all these X's to be left with only these two spots here so this is to set up our AND gates remember we've got for our sum of products we have ANDs and then we have ORs and so what we also want to do is we, we actually have uh, the option on this PLA to have two functions because remember for some products you only need one OR gate so what we want is we want uh, normally you're gonna want more than one AND gate but for this function we just want X and Y so we want this connection right here to go to this OR gate and we want to get rid of the rest of them we don't want this one we don't want this one and we don't want this one so we'd have to do this same procedure except for we're applying say we're getting rid of this guy so we would have to apply positive here and we'd have to apply a negative here a large current will flow will break this fuse and we'll have to do that for all three of these so we are only left with this connection here so uh, looking at this whole diagram it's it's not super tedious but it's a little annoying to look at just because there's so many connections um, so there's actually a, uh, a, a kind of an abbreviated way that we look at this um, where we just kind of go from this we go from this kind of exploded view to this simplified view and so so it's still assumed that in this case this is an 8 input AND gate so this is still an 8 input AND gate but we kind of take these all these connections and we compress it into just one line but we know even though we're drawing it as one line it actually represents all these because it doesn't make sense to have multiple uh, inputs connected to the same line because for example if this is if this is a zero and then this is a one then how do we know what signal this actually is so just know that even though it's compressed as one line it really represents eight lines in this case but either way it, it still works the same where uh, we can say we want uh, we can say we want X and Y prime and so that means we're gonna need to get rid of these all the rest of these connections and usually it would be an actual programming circuit that would go through and break all these fuses um, and so the this plane, or so actually, uh, a little bit of labeling uh, should be done here. So this we call this our AND plane, and this is our OR plane. So our OR plane works uh, the same way, right? We've got things collapsed down, but still, if if we only want this connection here, then we're going to leave this connection. I'm going to get rid of this one, get rid of this one, get rid of this one. So let's let's look at a, a full-fledged example on how we'd go about applying this. 
So here we've got a maximum of three inputs, right? So we've got the knots and the unknotted version. Um, and we've got a maximum of four functions that we can output. So I'm just going to do, well, let's see, I've got some prepared here. So I want to do uh, two functions. I want to do A prime B C or A prime B C prime. So that's the first one I want to do. And the next one I want to do is G equals A prime B C or B prime C. All right. So normally when you're going about kind of sketching what you want, we're going to assume that all these are blown connections and we're going to fill in only the connections you want to make. So I'm going to say this is A, this is B, this is C, and we're going to go all the way down here. I'm going to say that this is going to be F, this is going to be G, and these two guys here, they're just not going to be used in our case. Remember, these PLAs, they're generic devices that are made to be a program for your specific configuration. So they want to have uh, as many uh, outputs as possible in case you need them. In this case, we're only using two of them. So for our first AND gate for F, we need A naught B C. So what we need here is A naught. So A is going to this inverter. So we want this bubble here. We want B. And we want C. Make sure we don't accidentally get C naught. So that's this term. Now we want A naught B C naught. So, so we go down to our next AND gate, and we're going to say we have A naught B and C naught. Oops, sorry, that was B naught that I just filled in there. There we go. So we got B and C naught. Now uh, let's let's finish this function, right? So we've got both these and anded together terms here. So we only want these two AND gates to be connected to this OR gate for F. So that means we just connect this line and connect this line. And there we go. We've completely got F done. F is fully ready to implement. Now let's go through and do G. So there's some efficiency to be had here. We see that this first term, this first min term, is the same as this term here, A naught B C. And so we've already got it programmed here. So instead of reprogramming it, reprogramming it even though we have the space, it actually makes sense to just reutilize this AND gate. So it's fine to just go through and connect this AND gate to this OR gate. So this is just being efficient so we can save these for other functions if we need it. But we we still need to include our B naught C. So we're going to go down to our next available AND gate and we want B naught this time and C. And now we want, so we already have A naught B C, we also need B naught C. So we're going to select this gate. And there we go. So we have F and G are fully defined, and we did it uh, reasonably efficiently. Um, so this is just a quick overview on PLAs, how they work, and, uh, and how to use them.